You've probably seen the narrative around social media, YouTube, and other places around the internet about that one person online business model and that you can make a million dollars and be a millionaire with a one person team. Before I denounce whether I think that's a big fat lie or whether I think it's possible, let's first define what kind of life you as a business owner want to have. This is the whole key here. And if you're as excited as I am to dive into this topic, go ahead and comment the money emoji in the comments and let's get to it. Now, the first foundational question, in my opinion, that you have to ask yourself, and this is when, for example, you're visioning, right? And when you're really trying to think about the lifestyle business and everything that you're trying to build, what does that look like for you? Okay, I'm gonna say straight up, building a one man million dollar business is impossible. It's a lie. If you are trying to have true freedom, financial freedom, time freedom, location freedom, okay? Those three things are your goals and you want to have something that's not only profitable, right? That gives you those three things, but sustainable, sustainable for your life, then it's not possible, right? That one man show, one man, one woman. And the sooner that the, the mindset is shifted from that solopreneur, you know, mindset like, hey, a team is expensive, hiring somebody, I just don't know, I don't trust someone, I don't know if I can teach them to do the same th things that I can. As soon as you X that out, get a reframe to, you know, believing and knowing that you can hire somebody and, uh, you know, hiring a team is not an expense, okay? It's a sales investment, okay, for your business. Not only is it a tax write-off, but it is the smartest thing that you can do as you grow, okay? Perfect example, uh, I'll give a few, but perfect example of myself. When I had to take a maternity leave when my son was born, I was terrified because one, it's like, I was still, I was still very, I mean, I still consider myself a small business, but I was still like, wait a minute, like I have no clue how to give myself a maternity leave. Like I don't have a job where I can take 90 days off and get a paycheck you know, and not worry about anything, right? And that's not the way it works. So it's like, how the hell am I gonna do this? And so I was freaking out, I had anxiety when I was pregnant and I'm like, I first off, like I have no clue what it's gonna be like to have a family be a mother and learn like how to breastfeed, how to take care of a child. But on top of that, what's gonna happen to my business? Is it going to catastrophically fail if I go away? Is it going to be okay? Is it going to survive? Is it gonna profit? all of these things and so my point is that with that story like when i had to step away um, i promised myself i would give myself three months with my baby my first child and son um, when i had to step away i i was prepared okay what i did we'll talk about what i did but the end result was that for three months the business profited and profited well a healthy margin of 30 percent every single month while i was gone I was jumping for joy when I got back and saw the P&Ls, you know, the profit and loss sheets. I was like, holy crap, like this is wild. And um, it was because of systems and support that I, I had set up prior to that. And so um, another example that I can think of is um, Elise Dharma, maybe you guys have seen her around. She is a strategist for Instagram and those wanting to leverage Instagram, but she recently had a child and I was really excited to um, see her taking proper time off, okay? Cause she find like after three and a half months, I think of her having a child, um, she finally came, posted on a story and was like, hey, this these whole th last three and a half months, I haven't posted a single time on Instagram, but you guys have been seeing me every day on social media. Like that's the power of team support, okay? And you know, it was crazy every single day. Her stories were on point. I mean, it talked about her products, her promos, like all the, it gave value. I was like, dang, that's, that's really good. And so um, we didn't have that when I was away on Instagram, we just focused on YouTube, but it was really impressive. And so um, my whole point is that when you, uh, depending on your goal, okay, if you want to be in the mindset of you know, I want to be a one person show and keep all this revenue, it's going, things are going to get difficult. Right? You're going to get to a spot that you cannot 
leverage AI. Like you can't build a business just leveraging AI as much as that narrative is out there too. AI can build you a six figure business within 15 minutes and build you funnels and blah, blah, blah. Like that's crap, like that's such crap. Um, I'm not a fan of AI. I am for certain aspects, but like you can't, AI is not gonna allow you to take a proper maternity leave, sabbatical, vacation. It's just not like you're going to need real human beings and invest in people and support that are going to have your back and be trainable and know your systems and know what to do when you're gone. And so this is a, a huge lesson. Okay. So now on the contrary, I believe you don't need a gigantic team. I think you can operate with a very lean team and, you know, have lots of documented systems, SOPs and things in place to where you are really like crushing it, right? You, um, uh, either processes like onboarding, for example, are automated, systemized, um, you know, a tool like Zapier can do a bunch of things and uh, a trigger can do a whole entire workflow without a human having to be there. Yes, I'm all for that stuff, but there are some things that just have to be done by human while you're gone. And so I think the most important step when you're evaluating like who to hire first and next is like, what are the things right now that are mission critical that are moving the the needle in the business forward, but they do not have to be done by me, okay? They're really important, of course, but they don't have to be done. And so my you know, number one example that I can give right now is like, hey, YouTube, right? If you're a content creator, you have a channel, you have a business, let's say you're a coach and consultant or of course creator, right? YouTube is a big fat task. Like if you're not careful, you can spend uh, 15 to 20 hours a week doing YouTube things like editing, pre-optimization, engaging with your community, replying to comments, uh, making sure that you're distributing your videos on other social medias, uh, you know, the thumbnails, the graphics of the channel, like the list goes on and on and on. There's probably a hundred YouTube operations behind the scenes that um, really do not need to be done by you. Are they important? Hell yeah, absolutely, but they don't need to be done by you. So this is where this, like if you're a YouTube business owner and you don't already have uh, a, a YouTube editor and a channel manager in place, this would absolutely be my first hire because um, they are going to relieve, right? Let's say at least 10 hours a week, up to 20 hours a week of your time where you get that back to do anything else, right? Build your systems, focus on revenue generating activity, create the content, okay? And that's a prime example of what I mean by um, identifying the gap in your business where there's these mission critical activities moving the needle, but they don't need to be done by you. So think about it, right? Think about your customer service department. Maybe you are a course creator right now who is, you know, making, uh, I don't know, anywhere from 30 to 50 sales per month. If you are, congratulations, by the way, that's phenomenal. But you have a lot of ticketing to, needed to be done. People submitting like, things in the support inbox like, hey, like I can't find my course link or I need to reset my password or I need to change my credit card payment, okay? A lot of these things can be systemized, but that VA that um, or administrative assistant would have to come on board. That, you know, administrative stuff does definitely does not have to be done by you, okay? Another big thing, and I see this with creators slash business owners who are at that you know, 150K annual revenue level. I am speaking to you directly if, you know, you feel this way. If you feel like you have a few members on your team, but you have no clue what you're doing, projects feel like they're halfway finished and you are you feel like your main job is managing your team, even though it's so small, you need an operations manager or a director of operations who's gonna come in and manage the team for you. They're going to, um, understand project tasks. They're going to make sure that your team is doing the job, completing the tasks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because that right there, the task management is a whole thing in itself. Like, you know, checking in to see if the little things got done, um, assigning them. Right. And so these are really important. And so anyway, if any of that resonates with you, like, you know, besides the YouTube video editor and the VA and administrative assistant, you're probably at that point where you're needing a 
uh, operations manager. Okay, that's the point that I was at. I was so confused on what I needed and I felt so lost and tired and overwhelmed and working 50 hours a week. I was just like, I don't know what to do. Um, and then uh, an operation, uh, I made the choice to hire an operations manager and it was the best, okay? The best decision. And by the way, if you are a YouTube business owner and you are struggling right now with the growth of your channel, team support, you don't know how to hire a proper YouTube team that knows viral strategies, knows how to grow your channel, definitely check out our Subscribers to Sales Ascend program. And to find out more information, all you gotta do is click right here, um, learn more about the program and set up a YouTube strategy call with my team and I. We'll dissect exactly what it is that's going on uh, behind the scenes with your business, your channel, um, and see if it's an aligned fit to work together. And the things that you can expect from working with my team and I is guaranteed 5X growth from your YouTube team within the first 90 days of working with us, being able to only work two to three hours per week on your channel guaranteed while your team and the systems we incorporate for you do all of the heavy lifting. So if that sounds like, hey, it's my time to do this, definitely um, check out more information in the first link in the description. Okay, now let's, this brings me to another point in talking about income levels, the hardest uh, income level to work through is going to be when you're making between 10 to $30,000 per month. That is the, that level where you are grinding. It's that point when you're going, when you're still, when it feels like you're a one person team, even though you may have a VA or another, you know, support person. Um, it's, it's a grind that, uh, six figure level, it still feels like you're hustling and you're working more than ever. Um, that's the hardest part to get through. But once you are able to break through to the 50 K and beyond, that's when things are able to be way more streamlined because now you have the capital to, uh, invest in other team members and, you know, tools that help automate things and people that can help you work on your business, right? So you have your mind, right? You have you as a CEO, you're working on big vision. Where's this company going? Who do I want to serve? Um, what type of offer, you know, assuming you have a proven offer in the marketplace, like, okay, how is this offer going to scale? Um, but also you're, you're the visionary of everything. On top of that, you have to deal with finances, taxes, and the list goes on and on. So when you input a person into your business that's smarter than you in one area, that's where the it changes the game, right? But to have that person, you know, it takes it takes capitals. Cap capitable. Did I say cap? It takes capital. And uh, so when I say capital, anywhere from two to four grand a month. Um, and this person most likely will be US or Canada. They'll have experience in a company in real life, you know, businesses. So um, they bring the the wealth or the wealth of knowledge in this one expertise, whether that is a marketing director, an operations manager, um, what else is there? A fractional COO or chief operating. That's like kind of like a little bit down the line. But the most important thing in my mind is somebody who's in charge of sales and also somebody who's in charge of operations. So those are the first two big departments in your business that will be your most expensive hires. And so just know right now, if like you're at the income level, like, you know, zero to 30 K that is, that is, that's the hardest part. Just keep pushing through that, like keep growing your brand, keep driving traffic to your offers, um, you know, keep fulfilling the work. And, you know, as soon as it makes sense for several months in a row, when the profit margins are healthy, don't be afraid to make that um, next crucial hire. So I hope this was super helpful. If it was, I totally think you'll get tons of value and will enjoy the video coming up next all about uh, digital courses and how it's not really easy to make <laughs> passive income and it's glorified again. So another like breaking down the narrative of making easy passive 5k income with tiny digital products. That video is coming up right here. So click right there and I'll see you on that video. I went through about 50. No, wait, I'm lying. <laughs> I don't have time for that. I went through about four uh, videos all about making lots of money.